Today, we're going through one of the most exciting new certifications that is on the market, the DP600 or the Fabric Analytics Engineer certification to go along with Microsoft Fabric. So today we're having Brian Knight here, who, how much experience would you say you have with Fabric right now, Brian? That would be none right okay. now. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I had a lot of traditional data warehousing experience, so I'm hoping some of that will, will replicate over to here and ETL experience, but not in Fabric. Okay, so this is gonna be a great example of going through and trying to see what it takes to know and pass the certification. I recently passed this and this is exactly the tool I use to be able to prepare for the certification myself. So we're inside of our navigation menu, taking us through the interplanetary phases of prepping for the DP600. To begin with, we're gonna walk through a journey of learning how to manage and set up a data analytics environment with Microsoft Fabric. We're gonna be able to then go through and prepare and serve data. So a little bit of that ETL you talked about earlier, using some different tools that Fabric provides us. We're gonna be able to also implement and manage a semantic model, both a smaller and a large enterprise scale semantic model, and then ultimately as well be able to explore and analyze data with SQL, Python, or any of the other exploratory analytics tools. Sweet. And then the section we're doing today is which one? Today, we're going to start out at the very beginning to plan a data analytics environment. So more of an administrative conversation to be able to say, how am I going to set up Microsoft Fabric for my organization? Okay. So let's go ahead and kick this thing off. So we are going into the first part of the journey here and we're gonna look at a question and then Brian's gonna do his best to answer it. And if he gets it wrong, we'll be able to coach him through the process so that he understands exactly why he got that wrong. Let's start. Before we begin, do you wanna learn more about Microsoft Fabric and Azure? Visit prag.works forward slash Austin 40 and you will save 40% on an annual on-demand learning subscription where you will gain access to over 100 courses. Now, on to the video. What role should be granted to an administrator who needs to monitor the health of a fabric capacity? Use the principle of least privilege for your choice. The question here is always, is there actually a capacity administrator per a role? That, that makes the most logical sense for me, but does that role actually exist? I'm gonna say B, again, I don't know fabric yet myself. I'm learning it right now. So let's go with B. My guess is it's probably the workspace administrator, but I'm gonna still gonna try capacity administrator. All right, capacity administrator oh, is correct. Nice. So the fabric capacity administrator is going to be someone who has the ability to manage the capacity. Now this could be assigned to a specific person or potentially a service account, but it's going to be the account that has the ability to decide what workspace has that capacity and you can have multiple capacities theoretically and assign each one to different workspaces when necessary. Great job, Brian. All right, one, one down. All right, let's go ahead and go to the next one. You are a data solutions architect advising a company on licensing options for their data analytics platform. The company will need to give access to 20 report creators and 350 report consumers. It currently utilizes various data assets managed with Fabric, including a lake house for integrated data storage and processing. So which licensing option would you <laughs> recommend for the company to minimize their cost while fulfilling their requirements? We're not really building up this, are we? We're just going right in. Um, I'm going to go, I don't know what these F things are, so I'm kind of curious what these are. Uh, I'm going to go PPU. PPU. Let's go ahead and see what PPU is. Oh, oh that is incorrect. So what are these F things then? So recently there has been a change in how there is going to be a licensing for fabric compute and capacity through the Power BI service. Instead of having a premium per user per, per, per capacity or anything like that, it is only going to be done with F SKUs starting from 2025 and moving forward. As of right now, there are a couple of variations to that, but ultimately that will change. So the different F SKUs available to you starting with F2 and scaling all the way up to F2048 are going to essentially decide how much compute you have for your license that you're purchasing. The reason that F64 is the correct choice here is because it is the minimum license to be able to grant users access to read from reports or consume reports. As that question mentioned, there are 350 report consumers to be able to then go through and read from those without having their own individual pro or premium per user license. F64 is going to be the most comparable thing to a P1 license currently in Power BI premium per capacity. 
Gotcha. So the other ones even exist, or is F64 the actual only one that really exists in that list? They start with F2 and kind of just multiply up oh, okay. to F2, 4, 8, 16, 13, gotcha. 3, 4, gotcha. kind of keep doing some math problems there. Normally it feels like we need a Ouija board to kind of solve the uh, <laughs> licensing with uh, Microsoft. So thank you for clarifying that. Absolutely. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and see that. Luckily, Brian here will be able to then go through later on and have a redemption question. So that question might be coming up again towards the end of this session here. Let's go to the next question. Which type of on-premises data gateway is suitable to for scenarios where multiple users need to connect to multiple on-premises data sources? Well, there's an on-prem data gateway used in Power Apps and also in Power BI and Power Automate and also in Azure. So I'm going to go with the last one here, which is on-prem data gateway. Obviously not personal because that would imply like a personal you know, uh, Excel spreadsheet or something like that. So let's go with the last one. All right. That's hey, absolutely hey, hey, correct. Right. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. An on-premises data gateway is an application that you can install on your computer or a server to be able to then go through and make connections to the cloud from your on-premises data sources, whether it be a SQL server or an on-premises file system, something like that. A personal one is going to be just for you. One that would need to be shared throughout your organization would be just the traditional on-premises data gateway. Virtual network obviously doesn't support this either because we didn't mention anything about that in the Question. So yeah, great job, Sweet. Ryan, on All that right. one. Let's go ahead and move to the next one. How can you customize the appearance of your Power BI report? Ooh, wow. Okay, the Power BI is not my background also, so we'll go ahead. Oh, it used to be my background ages ago, but we'll say, all right, uh, custom theme feels like it might be interesting. Okay, let's go with number two. All right, so by creating a custom theme. Yeah. So let's go ahead and see if that's correct. And it is. A Creating a theme is not something new to Fabric. It's something that's been around for a long time with Power BI Desktop. The ability to create a custom theme, which is just a JSON file, is ultimately something you can do to help have a little bit better branding for your reports or your dashboards that you use throughout your organization. Awesome. Great job. All right, next question. You have a user who is attempting to migrate an Azure Synapse Analytics environment to Microsoft Fabric, but when they attempt this deployment, it fails due to permissions. Where can you go to find the ability to enable Fabric environments in the Fabric Admin Portal? Okay, well, it doesn't feel like workspaces because it is more high level. So mm -hmm. it feels like more like a tenant setting to me. So I'm gonna go with C. Okay, tenant settings. That is hey. incorrect. Great job, Ryan. Right, cool. So, the ability to go through and have a way to enforce the ability to migrate from some other cloud solution like Synapse Analytics, which was a platform as a service tool that had a lot of similarities to this now Microsoft Fabric, more of a software as a service tool. It can be managed within the tenant settings of your Fabric admin portal. You would need to have some sort of ability to be, have the access to the admin portal to be able to make that change or that setting occur. Great job, Ryan. Right, Again, cool. you are crushing this. I love that. Let's see. <laughs> All right, next question. You are a data engineer working in a Fabric tenant responsible for managing data assets. Your organization utilizes Microsoft Fabric for data storage and processing. As part of your responsibilities, you need to ensure efficient utilization of resources while maintaining flexibility in the capacity management. In the context of Microsoft Fabric, which type of capacity do you need to be able to pause and resume or scale up and down based on your organizational needs? Well, based on your licensing discussion earlier, mm. I'm going to go with the FSKU capacity, but it could be the Fabric one, the third one down too. So I'm going to go number one here. Okay, F skew capacity. Let's see. Hey, Again, I've great really taught. Job. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're learning through this already. Awesome. Right. So, an F skew capacity is something that can be provisioned through the Azure portal. So, in the Azure portal, you can go and purchase an F skew. If you purchase that as a pay as you go or a monthly prices model, essentially, you can go through and you can pause that or you can resume it at your organizational needs. You can also turn that on and scale it up or scale it down based on your specific needs for a workload at a time. So in the middle of the night, you could scale it down, only run some sp specific things. In the middle of the day, scale it up for something else. The other options, reserved instance, are not going to allow you to scale that up or down. You essentially pay for that as an annual license, and then you have no ability to scale up or down or pause on or off a P license. Currently, then, those will be deprecated sometime in the near future within Power BI. 
What's cool about that is you can also scale up during your month end like ETL processes, I assume. Yeah, absolutely. And send an API request ultimately to be able to scale up and down as well mm -hmm. to really efficiently awesome. manage those yeah. costs. So essentially, there's a 40% discount for a managed instance. If you think you can beat that 40% of uh, when you can manage that, you can keep it on and off 50% of the time, you could potentially save some money for you and your organization. Or if you don't think you can manage that or you don't want to, just go with the 40% discount using the reserved instance. Nice. All right. All right, just a few more here to think. What is the primary advantage of using a custom theme in Power BI report development? Okay, simplifies the process of connecting to the source. That's definitely not it. All right, uh, consistent branding. Okay, that B feels like it so far. Uh, it automates generation complex. Oh, definitely not going to help you with the calculations or the loading or the real time piece. It must be. That's the only thing that really pertains to it. It's like one of those like gamifying the, the or uh, gaming the, the test more than actually understanding the, the knowledge. In it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Do the process of elimination. Maybe get down to one or two and have your best chance if you don't know it for sure. Let's check out if it does ensure consistent branding. Absolutely. We already spoke on this a little bit. So kind of seeing some stuff come back in as well. Learning through the uh, ability to use this test over and over. See why something was wrong before. Ultimately, all of this quick coaching that I'm doing will be available to you through this user interface as well. You will have a nice video with between a 30 second to one minute response of why something is wrong, why something is right, based on how we go through and answer that. So that is going to be a nice tool as well to help right. you learn certifications. This test is still in beta or is it out? out? This test is uh, in, is out already publicly available gotcha. for everyone right now, but there's going to be additional elements added to it as we continue along. So parts of it are, are already ready to go. There are going to be elements added in the awesome. future to continue okay. to enhance. All right, let's go see if we got one or two more. You have a fabric tenant. You notice a fabric compute usage issue. What is causing, which is causing the performance issues? You need to increase the fabric capacity unit size. What should you use? To me, it feels like it's either one or four, the Azure portal or the Fabric admin portal. I'm gonna go with the Fabric admin portal. All right, let's go and see the Fabric admin portal. Oh, oh that no. was my first, my first gut was right, I guess. Yes, okay. always go with your first instinct yeah. most of the time. So the Azure portal is where you are going to go through to manage your Fabric capacity. So you are going to need to log into the Azure portal, purchase a Fabric capacity, and that is where you can scale up, scale down, turn on, or turn off. The Fabric admin portal is more of the settings that you have once you have provisioned oh, okay. that capacity. So again, great job there. Your organization is expanding its use of Fabric workspaces across various departments. Each department has between three to five workspaces. All workspaces support Fabric. To help a department's team members more easily find the data that is relevant to them, you are tasked with recommending a solution that facilitates grouping each department's workspaces to support one lake filtering. Which option aligns best with this hmm. requirement? All right, again, it looks like one or four is probably the answer. Either a tagging or number one. Again, I feel like I'm gaming the test, not necessarily uh, knowing, uh, knowing this yet. So I, I'm gonna go with the folder hierarchy. Okay, folder hierarchy. Tagging feels like it could be it also, we'll see. Let's go with neither. Oh, so there's one of those uh, certification quick coach responses already available, but I'll give you the answer right now. Leveraging fabric domains. A fabric domain is a new feature that's being added to the Power BI service as a part of fabric to ultimately be able to group different workspaces by department. So you might have an accounting domain, you might have some sort of sales or marketing domain, but each domain has specific workspaces that they can go through and group together for a specific workload that is most concerning to those individuals as a part of that uh, organization. So this is ultimately creating something similar to a data mesh architecture where you're having a central hub where you're going through and having all of your data available in a lake house, but you're picking out specific parts of that to be able to serve up to end users and their specific business needs requirements and to answer their own business questions. You have an Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 account that has been deployed behind a firewall. What will you need to do in order to allow the workspace access to this data lake with a Fabric shortcut? Select all the steps to apply oh, to man. this complete solution. So there oh. can be more than one. Okay. So it feels like now typically you have to create an identity and an app, an app registration with that. So for other stuff. So I'm assuming... 
Ooh, these are always tough ones in the Microsoft mm. certifications. And there's no, how many here either is there? No hints like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go with allow the firewall rule, uh, assign the permissions, and let's go with the first one also. All about the, th all about the second one. Creative Fabric Workspace Identity. Let's see if you're right. Ah! So, there's only gonna be two solutions for this specific question. You are going to need to, number one, create a Fabric Workspace Identity. That is correct. There needs to be a way to assign specific permissions to the identity of a Fabric Workspace. And the other thing is you will need to assign those permissions as well. There is no specific firewall. Really? Okay. No. All right, cool. Because all Microsoft ecosystems, so they can talk. Yeah, to it's all right, talking cool. to each other really easily right. because of that cohesiveness. All right, so now we're in redemption mode now. Yeah, so the so. couple that we missed, we're gonna go back and redeem. So this is going to be the question earlier that we were looking to yeah. talk about the different report creators. What do you got? F64. F64, absolutely. Again, similar to a P1 capacity, but that's going to be sure that every single person has no need to have a specific license in order to read from those reports. All Great right. job there. Okay. Let's look and see one more of these. We have, um, ah. yeah, do you know this I, one? I, this is the Azure portal. Remember this that is I mean. the Azure portal. Right, yeah. So again, a mistake. automatically, just remember the, the Azure portal. Once you go through and do that, you get that redemption championship. Yeah, once we kind of explain that, you right. have that quick coaching session, it makes a lot more sense. All right, we just saw this one. We know yeah. it's uh, the first one, and oh, sorry, this is oh, sorry, this is the uh, the, the workspace the organization, isn't it? It'd be the second one here, the domains. Yeah, fabric domains, a new feature being added to create that data mesh architecture, and then last one here, one more redemption. All right. You know, it's the uh, the first one. Create a fabric workspace and identity. It is the second. No, is it the last one, isn't it? Yeah, assign permission to the workspace identity. Let's check that out. Great Sweet. job. Let's check out all of our responses as we went along, kind of get a summary of what we looked at. So it says you scored a, a 60%, but you got those redemption questions. You can take this again though and potentially improve your score. So come back in here once you go through and learn the next thing and come back and just refresh on this as well. So nice little summary there of what you awesome. did. Great job, Brian. Again, <laughs> very little fabric experience. Brian did awesome uh, for being able to answer some of this off the cuff. Make sure you stay tuned to our Pragmatic Works channel. If you have not liked and subscribed, make sure you do that and get those notifications so you can stay up to date on all of the different platforms and different channels that we have coming through the uh, YouTube session here over the time. And then ultimately, we will have more sessions coming in the future on some of these other topics as well to continue to teach Brian here or anyone else about Microsoft Fabric and ultimately to pass the DP600 certification. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.